sometimes the hardest thing people have to do is that they expect to use these tools um, without any real practice. You need to practice. And one of the best pl ways to do that, to use it effectively, is to use the handout that, that you have been sent. During this short period uh, presentation, we're just going to learn how to install it, um, collect some citations from the library catalog and the library ba databases and web pages, and then we're going to um, show you how to add notes and keywords and attachments and that kind of thing, and then create a bibliography. Uh, Zotero has a tool, um, an add-on, that you can add and uh, that has directions in your handout um, so that you can paste citations into your uh, document. And, um, citations both in the bibliography and in the text of the document. I'm going to show you a little bit, little bit about that, but we're not going to really go into that in depth. Um, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, Zotero is a citation manager. It's a Firefox extension, so you have to have Firefox to help you collect, manage, and cite your references. And it's easy to use and sits in the upper or lower corner of the Firefox browser, one or the other. And it allows you to attach notes and web and images to your citations and organize them into collections for different projects. And the first thing we need to do is, is to install it. So if you'll open up your browser and go to www.zotero, oh, you have to spell it right. org and you'll see a big red button download now so if you'll do that when you download Zotero you will find that there is a little Z that appears up in your upper corner or sometimes it's down in the lower um, right corner on my screen is in the upper right hand corner of my so um, of my screen. So if I'm in, say, at the library website, it's still there. It appears always, but only in Firefox. Um, it's, they're beginning to work with the other browsers, but if you want it to work properly, you need to use Firefox at this point. Um, you have to restart, Fire, restart Firefox before um, your icon will appear. And here is the basic Zotero screen. When I click on that Z, my Zotero screen pops up at the bottom of my screen. Um, this, as you can see, I've been using it for a whole lot of um, projects. In the basic screen, I'm going to go over just a little bit. The folder that says My Library will have all of your citations, all of your um, resources that you've added to the to Zotero in that box. However, you can make folders. If you go up to the left hand corner here, you, it says new collection. You can make a folder and then add it adds a folder such such as these little yellow folders under the bigger folder that uh, says my library. I've added one for information literacy, one for craft movement. I'm working on economic history, Jack Tales and then um, tobacco, and then, then some untitled uh, ones as well. But um, the um, next thing you need to do, this is just for um, adding a group. Uh, I can put out these files in a particular group if I wanted to, like all the, if all the, um, I had several different ones involving the craft movement. You can put them into a group. Um, this is the most important icon on your screen. This little gear tells you how to use Zotero and it makes sure that you're getting all the benefits that you could from it. From this um, gear icon, you, you can import from other, um, from a desktop or from an, um, another Zotero, um, that, an, another 
Zotero file that you might have or from a clipboard. Uh, you can export. Um, you can, the most important one though is the preferences. So be sure and click on the preferences. And here you'll see that under general preferences, you'll want to click everything it's got, especially the ones um, on automatically take snapshots of web pages. Um, and then automatically attach PDFs and other files and automatically tag items with keywords and subject headings. But you might as well just, just check them all because you'll want every, every um, item that it's got, every uh, thing that it'll do. Um, then the next tab, if you pause over it, will tell you that it's a new item. You, want to, you can add new items by uh, just by manually by um, say if I wanted to add a book I could click on book and over here on the right hand side is where all your information is about your book so you could put in the title on abstract an author a series or whatever the publisher the date all of those kind of things so this is the, this is the icon you use to enter things manually uh, this icon is to create a web page uh, item a web page um, citation from a page that you're working on. And this one is to um, add an item by identifier. Those of us, um, most, well, those of you in psychology or social sciences will know about the DOIs and that's what that, that means um, to, so that you can add an item by the DOI itself. Um, this is a new note that you're going to make and the new note will appear over here on the right under notes and this uh, icon is for attachments. You can attach a snapshot of the current page or a link to the current page or uh, a link to a file and this little search um, spyglass here is how you search your library. So if you're looking for a particular thing, say I want to search this particular library, my own library, and I wanted to uh, say I wanted the title to contain graphs. And I enter, I get all the, all of the um, resources that I have, all the citations that I have on, on crafts. Um, then the next one I wanted to talk about, this is another way to sit, search the tags that you have. Most of you know what tags are, but on this box over here it tells this is the main in, information about your um, book or whatever your, your resource is. This is um, a journal article. Uh, entitled An Unexpected Enemy, it's got the author, the abstract, uh, the name of the journal, and all of the information about, about it that came in. If, we had, if I had made some notes about this, it, it, I can put them here, I can add them now. Um, if, it, if I had added any tags, this automatically added some tags so that um, I can use one of these tags and these art, this article will come up. And then related things are things like um, URLs or um, maybe a PDF of a document or something. So, um, and this one uh, is locate. Um, if I wanted to, I I'll show you in just a minute, or rather I'll show you right now. If, if you want to view something online, you can locate it that way. Um, this was the one that I um, was looking at. Um, you can also um, look in our library catalog and locate. Um, I can search our library catalog from here. But to do that, you have to do another one more item from your gear down here. Under your preferences, and I should have told you all about this before, under advanced, to be able to search our library from Zotero, you have to have a 
resolver for it. You can click on this search for resolvers and it might come up for automatically for you, but this is the URL and it's written on your handout as well on about the third page I think. Um, and that will allow you to search our library from this particular place in Zotero. Um, and then over here is you can sync with the Zotero server. Um, in the handout I'll tell you how to sign up for Zotero online and you can sync with the Zotero server here with this icon. Um, this little icon is for um, toggling the tab modes, just toggle the tabs back and forth. But um, I wanted to make sure that we got the basics on the screen, on the Zotero screen itself. Um, any kind of tag can be attached. Um, and they appear over here in the middle column. Um, you can add your own keywords and tags as well as the ones that are automatically added. See over here under your library list are some of the tags that have been added automatically. They come up in, key, in um, subject headings in your results. Um, now, to, basic, to start back to the basics, we want to um, add some books to our, to our Zotero. So I go to our library catalog and you can do it with a um, Zotero screen open. Or sometimes I find I don't have enough room to do that. Uh, you can search with that app search. It works with app search, but I like to go to the classic catalog and search when I, I like to search for books and articles at different times. So if I'm looking for something on the subject of crafts, all kinds of different crafts, craft shops, craft festivals, craft family, handicraft. That's the one I'm looking for. Handicrafts, Southern Appalachian region, Southern exhibitions, Southern history, Southern history of crafts, 20th century, um, etc. So I click on the handicraft Southern and I look, these are the books that I'm getting. Now I can, in your screen up here, in your um, basic your screen where the URL appears is a little folder. And if you pause over it, you'll see that it says save to Zotero. If I click on this folder, it will allow me to save each, to choose which ones to save. It will give me a list of all the ones that are up there. Well, it should have all of these. <laughs> and I can select them all or just one. But then if I go into one, one of the records, the Backcountry Makers, I have a little book up here in my address bar. Um, and I click on that and it automatically saves it to Zotero as, it, as you'll see down here on the bottom in the corner. Saving to my library in Zotero. And then when I bring Zotero up again, uh, you, I will find that Backcountry Makers, an artisan history of Southwest Virginia and North, Northeastern Tennessee, and over here will be all the information about the book. Amazing, isn't it? This little Z is um, up here. Your little icon is um, used to both collapse and expand Zotero short software. Um, now I'm going to show you how to click, uh, get how to collect some articles. Um, if I go back to the library and go to article databases and um, go to Appalachian Studies and go to Mountain People, Life and Culture in Appalachia. And this is a database that has um, 
a lot of a lot of resources for researchers in Appalachian history and culture. It's taking a little while to connect, isn't it? Surprise, surprise. This tells you about the collection and it, and it tells you that this collection is in Archives Unbound, which is a larger um, database. Uh, this is I want to view all the documents in this life and culture and I can search within that collection over here for crafts. Uh, all craft revival. Oh. Nothing about that, so let's try crafts or handicrafts. Oh, come on. Revise the search. It's coming up slowly but surely. This is working a little slowly, so oh, there it goes. I'm going to try a different database, which will give you an example of some others as well. Um, let's go down to the, the academic search, which is one that everybody uses at some point. Well, sorry, I should have looked at this earlier. Um, Academic One File. It's a little bit slow today. And I'm going to look for articles in about the craft revival in Academic One File. Quilt Survivals and and revivals, South Africa, craft revival, so I should limit it further, go, go to advanced search and limit it further to Appalachia or at least the United States. But when I click on this article, it, it uh, shows a little article page up here, just a little um, typed page that says save to Zotero. So I click on that and it saves down here. You see that it's saving it to the library. And then when I click, click on my icon here and bring up my Zotero library, it will be highlighted in there. It's a journal article, quilt survivals. And since this is alphabetical, it's slower. Um, but I can click on all the ones I've added to the craft movement. Um, in this case, I probably have not added that one yet to my craft to the craft movement folder. So I'll probably go down here and say um, quilt survivals and revivals, and then drag it over into the folder for the craft movement. And then when I click on this, it will just have my articles about the crafts, not everything in my library. All right, we've done articles. Now let's try web pages. Um, I'll go back to open up a new window and go back to Google and and one of our, one of the great pe web pages about the craft revival is at Western New Carolina University and it's called, uh, um, I think it's Heritage um, Craft Revival. All those words in there somewhere. Here it is, Craft Revival, Shaping Western North Carolina Past and Present. It's an excellent website and very informative about the craft revival itself. Um, 
they're doing a great job at Western. Um, I want to save this web page to my Zotero library, so I'll pull it up and I will go to the little web one here that says create a web page item from the current page. That looks almost like a journal article, doesn't it? So it is creating it um, from the page and giving me the URL so I can get back to it easily and adding it to my library. All right, we wanted to talk a little bit about working with documents. Um, I'm going to minimize everything but my, uh, well, I was hoping to minimize everything but my Zotero library, but um, I'll, it won't hurt to leave that up, I guess. But I wanted to show you how to create a bibliography. I have over here on this screen a document. Um, and to create a bibliography, I click on the gear again. And let's see, it's in preferences. No, this is rather tricky. You have to do the hold down the control key and choose what you want. Say I want it, well, I'm in the craft movement, so I want Jane Hicks Gentry, I want Doris Ullman, I want uh, the craft revival, the shaping Western North Carolina. I want to put all that in my bibliography. So this is it's in your handout, but it's the trickiest thing about Zotero because nobody tells you this until you read the instructions. You right-click it, and down at the bottom there's several things. Remove these items from collection, move them to trash, merge, export, and create bibliography from items. So I click on that, and then it asks me which style I want, and then how I want to save it as HTML, and then um, I tell it OK, and then it asks me where I want to save it. So I put it on my desktop, um, and then I go to the desktop, and here's my untitled bibliography, and I can cut and paste it into my document over here. into the bottom uh, it looks kind of funny with all of those percentages but that's sometimes how um, websites do and I, I usually take this much off of it um, and then they also word has um, I'll go back to here no, you're not seeing this screen, are they? All right. Here's the Word file, and uh, I'll show you a little bit about when you download the plugins for um, work for Zotero. This is kind of a little bit more advanced. It gives you like um, some of the other citation management. Um, software does a way to insert your citation. Um, this this tool um, is editing your citation. This is is adding your um, inserting the bibliography, and this is uh, editing the bibliography. So these tools are for um, in this case <coughs> we can insert the bibliography. insert the bibliography and then I, p I go to my um, bibliography that I have the, the, all the references that I have collected to put in the bibliography and then it automatically pastes them in. Now I have to tell you it's not always right. Um, one of the times when you are working with Zotero, um, one of the choices you have in your um, within your preferences here is that you can choose, uh, here's the sync, uh, that syncs to on your online collection. And this is an export way to export, is your, in your site box. You can choose which 
um, it tells you to inst install the word add-in, and then you can choose which citation style that you'd like for your your um, resources to be cited. Okay, that's about enough I think you can handle for one day. And so um, if you have questions, please enter them, but let me tell, let me say one more thing. Very often I get a lot of questions about people who wanted to use Zotero and think all it takes is five minutes to figure it out. It takes a little effort on your part as well. EndNote takes even more effort on your part. So if you want to use it, do plan on spending some time on playing around with it and figuring out what it'll do. But it really can help you, particularly collecting your citations and keeping them in one place so that you don't have to wander around flipping through papers, figuring out where is that thing that I saw and what is the where was it published and who was the publisher? It helps a whole lot, and I think I highly recommend it to students as well for that um, purpose. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Okay, I'm ready okay for guys, questions. I'm going to turn on everyone's microphones. So if you have any questions, go ahead and give us a shout out. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, this is Paulette Marty. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay, you got a thank you from Daniel. Okay. <laughs> Anyone have questions? Comments? No, I can't. Anything shown again? I can't get in. Y'all are being real quiet out there. Um yeah. Uh Okay. Okay, Paulette, what's your question? question? Okay, great. Um, um, I, can you hear me or do yeah. I need to type? No, we can hear okay. you. I can hear you. Great. I'm just wondering, so does that mean that I can only use this when in Firefox? I can only access it through Firefox? Or is there a way to, That's to download it onto my computer? Um, yes. But you can you can download it onto your computer, but you can you to bring it back up to bring Zotero, you can download the information on your computer. But to that to use it, um, you have to have Firefox right now. They're working on trying okay. to get the other browsers to work with it, but I have not had much success with that. I tried that before this this um, workshop um, to see if it would work, but. Um, Pretty much, you have to pretty much use um, Firefox. However, you can export all of your um, all of your references with a USB drive, and then put fire, you know, put downloads of Terra. It only takes a few minutes on any computer that you're working on, including okay. your laptop. Okay. 